What if Frankenstein, the monster, not the doctor, was actually a success? And by success, I mean came to life, was totally cool, people genuinely liked him. So the doctor decided to create another monster, but this time using more parts than before. Totally misunderstanding what made the original creation a success in the first place. Not the quantity of parts, but how well they fit together. Hi, I'm Dan Larson, and this is the history of VR Troopers. Thank you to Unbounce for sponsoring this video. Unbounce is the leading landing page builder platform that helps you convert more visitors into leads, sales, and customers. Where would any of us be without customers? Unbounce conversion intelligence enhances your marketing intuition with AI insights to ensure the best campaign performance every time, every single time. But Dan, what does that even mean? Look, you can build beautiful, high-converting landing pages with no coding required. With their easy drag-and-drop builder and all-you-can-eat buffet of 100-plus landing page templates, you can bring any campaign vision to life in a fraction of the time it would take with a developer. You can earn up to 30% more conversions with their latest AI-powered feature, Smart Traffic. And not for nothing, but Unbounce is the number one landing page platform for over 15,000 brands including Zola, Later, and Hootsuite. Thank you again to Unbounce for sponsoring this video. Click the link below or go to unbounce.com slash toygalaxy and use promo code toygalaxy to get 20% off your first three months. That's unbounce.com slash toygalaxy and use promo code toygalaxy for 20% off or click that link below. VR Troopers is a live-action superhero television series that ran for 92 episodes over two seasons from 1994 to 1996. It is related to Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the same way Fettuccine Alfredo is related to macaroni and cheese. Fair warning, I wrote this script while I was waiting for dinner. Ryan Steele, Caitlin Starr, and J.B. Reese are three late-stage teenagers. I don't want to say with attitude, but they are certainly attitude-prone. They are three friends living in a place called Cross World City, California, which is practically... It is based on a real city in California, even though it isn't a real city in California. All three, along with Ryan's dog Jeb, hang out, train, and sometimes work at Tao's Dojo, the local karate academy run by their friend and sensei Tao Chong. Caitlin works at a local newspaper called The Underground Voice Daily, where her work frequently finds her exposing billionaire developer Carl Zichter's attempts to remake Cross World City one building at a time. Ten years ago, Ryan's father, Tyler Steele, disappeared while conducting some top-secret research into virtual reality. Virtual reality, it turns out, is not what we have understood it to be. It's more like an alternate reality. Virtual reality is a parallel dimension full of mutant robots that are trying to find a way into our dimension to take over. Hell of a thing. <laughs> One day, Ryan, JB, and Caitlin are summoned to a secret laboratory wherein the near-life holographic artificial intelligence Professor Horatio Hart resides. It's so much like the real thing in just about every detail, almost as good as the actual man himself. In life, Horatio Hart was a friend and collaborator of Ryan's father, Tyler. Horatio tells the story of Tyler's work into the interdimensional ramifications of the highly advanced virtual reality work that he was conducting. It resulted in Tyler's disappearance and, essentially, Horatio's rebirth as a digital entity after an evil being called Grimlord breached the reality barrier that keeps the two dimensions separate. Professor Hart is, for all intents and purposes, the Zordon of the series. He provides Ryan, JB, and Caitlin with information as well as new battle suits and vehicles and weapons they will need in the fight against Grimlord, the evil ruler of the virtual reality dimension. Because the fight has already begun, evil is on the verge of making sufficient gains. Spoiler alert, Grimlord is Carl Zichter, and he is preparing the way on both sides of the reality barrier for a full invasion of his entire army. Ryan, the leader and most disciplined martial artist, JB, the science and computer whiz, and Caitlin, the photographer and journalist, must utilize their new virtualizer pendants, say the words trooper transform, and become VR troopers. Guardians of the reality barrier, it's going to take everything they have to fight for this dimension and, with any luck, find Ryan's father. VR Troopers was produced by Saban Entertainment in cooperation with Toei Company and Cyberprod. It premiered in the U.S. in September of 1994, just a year after the previous collaboration between Saban and Toei, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. 
Mighty Morphin Power Rangers was pretty much an overnight success. Saban's production had successfully utilized licensed footage, costumes, and props from an existing Japanese television show called Kyoru Sentai Juranger. Recut it with new script, American actors, and new branding, the whole equaling far more than the sum of its parts. With the formula in hand, Saban's team raced to replicate the success with a second project. Power Rangers was a quick and cost-efficient way to produce a show, but there was no way to know how long the window of opportunity would remain open with the American audience, nor could they stop any other studios from doing the same thing with other Japanese shows. Hello. The first draft of VR Troopers was a show called Psycon. The character of Adam Steele would merge with a cyborg called Psycon, as opposed to being inside a high-tech battlesuit. Grimlord was Cyrus Riker instead of Carl Zichter, and he commanded an army of cyber drones. Cyrus's son, Percy, and Adam had a Karate Kid Johnny versus Daniel type relationship. The focus was singular, no JB, no Caitlyn. Tao Chong is still there as a mentor, but we only have one hero to worry about, only one show to borrow footage from. That concept evolved into a show called Cybertron. Yes, just like the planet where the Transformers are from. No, not related in any way. Yes, it would have been challenged by Hasbro even then. In this version, Adam Steele was played by Jason David Frank. Footage would be pulled from Cho Jinki Matalda or Superhuman Machine Matalda. Your pronunciation may vary. Again, a singular character fighting war drones led by Grimlord. Grimlord is Cyrus Richter in our world. He has a son named Percy who is in a Karate Kid, Johnny versus Daniel type relationship. Tao Chong is back. Tao has a daughter named Mia. And this version has its own bulk and skull in news reporters Elmo and Scuzzy. Dr. Professor Hart looked more like Albert Einstein and was programmed by Ryan's father. Some of this version persists to this day on copies of the official Power Rangers fan club video where the CG Einstein version of Hart is still used. And of course, you can watch it here on YouTube. VR Troopers was produced in a similar manner to Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Borrow existing footage from Toei shows, recut, recast, redub, rebrand. In this case, season one featured footage from two different shows, 1987's Superhuman Machine Matalda and 1986's Dimensional Warrior Spielbahn. The rainbow-colored superhero shows that Power Rangers were based on are part of a series called Super Sentai. That series had been running for almost 20 years at the time. Each year, the series reboots, changes names, themes, narratives, costumes, actors, robots, and everything else. Each show produced around 50 episodes per year. While there was plenty of material to draw from, Saban needed something that was similar to Super Sentai, but visually distinct. Saban picked Metal Heroes. Metal Heroes, like Super Sentai, was a subgenre of tokusatsu programs on Japanese television. Tokusatsu roughly translates to special effects. It applies to all kinds of live action shows from Godzilla to Ultraman to Super Sentai to Kamen Rider. Metal Hero shows generally focus on a singular hero utilizing highly advanced technology in a Space Ranger military or police capacity. The series began in 1982 with Space Sheriff Gavon, it was followed in 1983 by Space Sheriff Sheravan, and in 1984 by Space Sheriff Scheider. Space Sheriff Scheider would actually be used as Ryan Steele's Season 2 suit, making it the oldest footage in active use for a Saban production at the time. When VR Troopers was being produced, Spielbahn and Matalda were already 7 and 8 years old respectively. Scheider footage would be a full decade, and it shows. Caitlin Starr, J.B. Reese, team up to battle the treacherous Darkheart. He attacks in the Skyborg jet, firing a mega missile. Oh, brutal. But he's no match for the troopers. Armored up, they soar in on the VR turbo cycle. Totally virtual. Team up with the troopers, Savon's VR troopers. Each sold separately. VR Troopers episodes are cobbled together with lots of parts and pieces. The mission was to form one cohesive narrative about a team of heroes using newly shot scenes with American actors and settings supplemented with action scenes from three different shows about individual heroes that never cross over from show to show on the Japanese end. Matalda provided Ryan's suit, Grimlord, and his throne room, as well as his named warriors, but Spielbahn had JB and Caitlyn's battle suits, as well as several other evil minions, the generic Skug troops, and anything involving the sky-based shark cruisers, tanks, and fighter jets. It was a challenge, to say the least. 
Let's see. There's a limited amount of footage for both shows involved in season one. And since Ryan's character never appears in any scenes with JB and Caitlin's characters in the original footage, it limits storytelling right out of the gate. Nearly every episode of VR Troopers is compelled to introduce a reason why the team must be split up so it makes sense that they aren't in the same geographic location. And if they aren't split up, well then get ready for some fun. Time for me to put my state college film studies classes to work. I'm no Steven Spielbahn, but I know a thing or two about continuity in filmmaking. The goal is to make editing invisible to the audience. You don't want each cut from shot to shot, from scene to scene, to take the viewer out of the moment of the action. There are several ways that the locations of characters in a scene, their physical relationship to each other, the relationship to objects or key set pieces, and the overall clear understanding of the action in a scene can be clearly communicated to the viewer. The most common is the 180 degree rule. If two characters are talking to each other, one is on the left of the frame, the other is on the right of the frame, and you never switch positions. As if the camera is physically incapable of moving to the opposite angle, it would be confusing to the viewer. Did they actually do a dance move and hastily switch places? Why? Is something else going on out of frame that can't be seen that caused them to switch places? These aren't questions you want your viewer thinking about when they should be in the story. But what do you do when you don't actually have any footage of the characters in the scene together? It's a problem that exists even today in big budget movies like Captain America Civil War. You either cut back and forth between shots that are close enough to be convincing, or you invent new material that will fit narratively even if it doesn't match visually. VR Troopers does both, and it can get very confusing. The result is inconsistent or confusing environments, a feeling of claustrophobia because the camera can't pull back to reorient the geography of the scene because there is no consistent geography, because no one is actually together. The VR Troopers production used a few other tricks. One, they had access to the suits, so there were times where they put the American actors in the suits and show them against a green screen, then superimpose them over whatever footage they needed in the background. It's not a great solution for long shots, but works on shorter shots. Two, shoot as much as you can out of the battle suits. Three, they created a new location called the Battle Grid. When they wanted the entire team to be in a fight together, they wore their special Battle Grid suits and met the enemies in a virtual environment that was basically just a soundstage with flashing lights, curtains, a smoke machine, and fake rocks. The Battle Grid and the Battle Grid suits are a necessary plot contrivance, yes, but they are also either the most insulting, desperate, cheap attempt to skirt around a problem that they created or an absolute stroke of genius that pushes the show into the realm of genre self-critique, a deconstruction of what it means to be tokusatsu in America and our ability to suspend disbelief when we want to. Because I don't want to gloss over this. The battle grid suits are just repainted red Power Ranger helmets and spandex bodysuits with patterned fabric stuck to them intended to invoke their regular cybernetic battle suits. It's the kind of thing that I can't be sure is making me angry or jealous. It's the kind of thing we could produce here on this show, with our budget, that gives me hope that we're closer than we think to Hollywood legitimacy. Unlike Power Rangers, VR Troopers had the benefit of syndication, meaning it was sold to networks who chose to run it, where Power Rangers was broadcast on Fox Kids. This enabled VR Troopers to push the limits of violence more than Power Rangers, albeit violence applied to rubber suit monsters and robotic henchmen. VR Troopers featured Brad Hawkins as Ryan Steele. He would go on to voice the first Gold Ranger on Power Rangers Zeo a year after VR Troopers ended, and since then has kept himself busy with voice acting in games and a lot of redubbing Japanese animation. Caitlin was played by Sarah Brown, who also had a small role on Power Rangers Zeo before moving on to lots of other television and movie roles, including stints on General Hospital, Days of Our Lives, and As the World Turns. JB was played by Michael Hollander, who stepped away from acting to pursue a career as an animator for television, movie, and video games. Grimlord was played by Gardner Baldwin, Tao was played by Richard Rabago, Jeb the Dog was played by Zeb the Dog, and voiced by Kerrigan Mayen doing a very hammy Jack Nicholson impression. You might recognize Kerrigan as the same person who did the voice for Goldar on Power Rangers. VR Troopers music was composed and or produced by Shuki Levy, Ron Wasserman, Kusa Machi, and Jeremy Sweet, basically the same team that did the Power Rangers music. Shuki Levy also directed the first episode of the series. 
Like Matalda, Scheider, Spielbahn, and Power Rangers, one of the primary goals of VR Troopers was to sell toys. Kenner rolled out a full set of action figures and vehicles in multiple scales with a variety of action features. The basic line of figures stood roughly five to six inches in height with four or five points of articulation depending on the character design, Ryan, JB, and Caitlyn in their battle suits. Ryan and JB had virtual armor versions with removable armor pieces. They were paired against Grimlord's lieutenants Tankotron, Air Striker, General Ivar, and Darkheart. The VR troopers were equipped for battle with their battle cruiser, pursuit jet, turbo cycle, fighter bike, and skyborg jet. And I don't want to gloss over this, but they also released super deluxe battle grid suit versions of Ryan, JB, and Caitlyn, complete with their spandex body suits and repainted Power Ranger helmets. You have to respect the commitment to the bit. And hey, if those figures aren't good enough for you, keep in mind that every Matalda, Spielbahn, or Scheider figure that has ever been released is also a VR Troopers figure, even if it doesn't say so on the package. Just call it VR Troopers and absolutely no one will stop you. In 1995, Marvel Comics released five issues of a combined Power Rangers and VR Troopers series. Not that they were in the same stories together, but their stories were in the same books together. One cover on one side, the other cover on the other side. Just flip to the side you want facing out. Creators who worked on the books include legends like Carl Potts, Jimmy Palmiotti, and Fabian Nicieza. The series is not currently available in trades or on Comixology, so hit eBay or the long boxes if you want to read them. The UK audience via Phoenix Press was treated to a series of VR Troopers 3D comics. VR Troopers was featured on the Game Wizard, a handheld game system manufactured by Micro Games of America. Three titles, Ryan's Challenge, JB's Battle, and Jeb's Rescue. Sorry, Caitlin, it was you or the dog. The Game Wizard was basically a plastic shell that looked conspicuously like Nintendo's Game Boy, but with interchangeable LCD game cartridges reminiscent of Tiger handheld electronic games. Uh, speaking of, Tiger Electronics released a handheld LCD game called VR Troopers When Worlds Collide. 1995 also saw the release of VR Troopers, published by Sega for the Genesis and Game Gear. The virtual fun didn't stop there. In 1994, Milton Bradley released a VR Troopers board game. McDonald's produced a series of four toys for their Happy Meals. There were puzzles and party supplies, a VR Troopers lawn sprinkler, trading cards, shirts, Christmas stockings, ornaments, and of course, pogs, or fun caps, depending on where you're from. VR Troopers ran into the inevitable wall that all of these series will eventually face. There's no more footage from the original series to use. In fact, after just two seasons of stitching things together to form a new narrative, a lot of the fight scenes and explosions had already been used multiple times. Your only choices are, one, use the same props and costumes and start shooting your own entirely original scenes. Expensive. Two, reboot with a new aesthetic as Power Rangers has successfully done going on 28 years now. Or three, cancel and move on to something else. After 92 episodes, that's what happened to VR Troopers. There was no more footage to utilize from Matalda, Spielbahn, or Scheider. Saban was producing other shows like Masked Rider and Big Bad Beetleborgs. The Power Rangers had a spectacular big budget box office feature that, despite the reviews, was a financial success. Some episodes of VR Troopers were released on a series of VHS tapes. In October of 2012, Season 1, Volume 1 was released on DVD by Shout Factory. Season 1, Volume 2 followed in January of 2013. Season 2, Volume 1 hit in May of 2013, and then the rest of it was canceled due to low sales. Until January of 2014, when Season 2, Volume 2 was finally released. You can track those down if you want the security of physical media, or you can purchase them digitally through platforms like Prime Video, iTunes, or Apple TV. You could have watched it on Netflix, but it left in February of 2021. For the diehard fan, I recommend watching it on a browser on your favorite VR headset. There is no current reboot or continuation of VR Troopers. Saban was purchased by Disney. The Power Rangers franchise is owned by Hasbro. VR Troopers as a trademark, per the extent of our research, is currently showing as abandoned. If anyone could revive it at this point, it would likely be Hasbro's production studio, AllSpark Entertainment. And while there does not appear to be any movement on that end, it is worth noting that some of the Metal Heroes characters have shown up in recent seasons of Power Rangers. As long as Hasbro has a financial stake in preventing any encroachment on their Power Rangers territory, they will continue to exert their legal rights to reinvent those characters in a proprietary manner to ensure that their Japanese history and identity is never known to American audiences. I may be taking this a little personally. I'm going to take five, and then we'll do the close.
Street. Legend has it that after VR Troopers was canceled, the cast got together, shared some leisure enhancement beverages, and did a new voiceover track for a montage of scenes from the show. It is not intended for their normal child audience, and as far as I can tell, it's real and available here on YouTube. Fans have kept the legacy of VR Troopers alive, whether it's in the form of homemade virtualizer cosplay props or homage toy designs like Toy Pizza's Meta Ruda Rift Killer action figure. Technically, yes, a Metalda homage, but we covered this before. It counts. VR Troopers is the predictable result of the incredible success of Power Rangers, a show that brought the same energy, the same ingenuity, the same built-in aesthetic to an audience that was absolutely asking for it. More ninjas, more robots, more mutant monsters, more near-future speculative science fiction, more blinking console lights, more floating digital heads, more of everything. Turns out that even though the audience wanted more, there was a limit to how much more. Looking back now, from the future, the show that set the formula that paved the way, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, was the only one that could transcend the generations. It's possible that somehow, someway, VR Troopers could have been the series to connect with the mainstream audience outside of Japan in a durable, lasting, financially profitable way. Perhaps if we can find the reality barrier, we can build a bridge from there to here, blend the two together from virtual reality to a mixed reality where the VR Troopers fight on. Ooh boy. Ooh boy. Remember that time we shot this episode? Holy cow. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Please hit like, hit subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Thank you very much to those of you who already are. If you haven't heard, we started a second channel called Toy Galaxy 2. That's T-O-O. -O. Head over there and subscribe for stuff we don't post here. If you're in the position to help the channel grow, please visit our Patreon or become a YouTube channel member. Please share this video and let us know in the comments down below if you are a fan of VR Troopers or if you thought it was a knockoff unworthy of your very busy 10-year-old schedule. Got a lot of parks to skateboard to. Don't have a lot of time to be watching all these shows about ninjas fighting monsters. I prefer to live the adventure doing ninja kicks off the swing set into the sand pile. Is this nostalgia? Is this what people say they feel watching our videos? I'm so old now that I would literally die if I jumped off a swing set into a pile of sand. Just bury me, just bury me there. <laughs> just, <laughs> <laughs>